this is Kathy from Homespun Seasonal Living, and this is another part of our Cultivate and Nourish project. And today we have Anne from uh, Farm Girl in the Making with us. We're going to talk all about how to use those canned apples because apples are always such a great thing to can. They're frugal and easy, and if you're growing them, you always have tons. And, you know, there's no point in canning something if you're not going to use it right. later. Right. So. <laughs> well, hi, Anne. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Great. So let's talk about uh, ways to can apples. And I think you're going to talk mostly about canned apple slices. Is that right? Right. Yeah. So apples are one of those things that you can actually, you know, they store well depending on the variety. But if, if you're anything like me where we're on the go all the time, just a jar of canned apples that I've already been pretty much cooked through is the best thing. And it's a lifesaver. It is a lifesaver. And we do everything from, you know, applesauce to, you know, apple pie filling and all that stuff but the basic apple just the basic apple is one of those things that you can actually jazz up as you need to when the time comes and you know i i, I think our favorite method for doing that is just baking with them first of all and then i've kind of ventured a little bit more into other things with them this year and so with that said it's just been incredible that i haven't done it and haven't canned more just basic apple slices <laughs> outside of last year. Outside of last year was my first year doing it. Yeah. And so when we're talking about canning apple slices, we're talking like just in a sugar syrup. Just in a very light sugar syrup. So I do a very, very, very minimal simple syrup and it's very light. And the reason why is because you don't want it to be too sweet by the time you open it up in the jar and you don't have to have that sugar content high anyways in there. So uh, when I say a very light simple syrup, I'm doing like one cup to maybe eight cups of water. So one cup of sugar to eight cups of water. And sometimes even less. If the apples are naturally sweet, I don't really add hardly anything to them at all. And the type of apples that you want to use are key, right? So you don't want to use a soft apple like a Gala or anything like that. You want your firmer and crisper apples like the Fuji's or the Honeycrisp. I know those are hard to find for some of you guys in your local areas, but where whatever you can get a hold of that's the firmest apple, use that one instead. You know, like Granny Smith's are a great firm apple, and I know that those are available just about anywhere. Macintosh, you know, um, kings are mainly for other uses, but, you know, the old Thompson Tom King apples are just delicious for them as well, too. So select a firmer variety, use minimal sugar, and you have a very, very, very useful product. That is great. Okay, and so every, just, just as a, a reminder, sugar is not what ever does the preservation work for us. Right. It's actually scanning the process. So we don't need to use sugar. Sugar definitely helps with texture and some other things when we're canning. Color, them. texture, mm -hmm. yeah use it yes yeah and you can actually if you really wanted to and you didn't want to use any granulated sugar at all you can use honey however you're going to get that honey flavor in your apples and if you don't mind that then go ahead and use honey or other sweeteners but my palate is very <laughs> very sensitive so i choose to just use a very light simple syrup instead yeah, yeah. and are you packing them raw or hot i am packing them hot very lightly blanched hot in a sense okay so i'm not cooking them all the way through most of the time you don't have to you can raw pack them but what happens with raw packing is they float right so you've got this beautiful quart sized jar and all of a sudden you've got a quarter of that jar completely full of liquid and your apples have floated when you blanch them it actually slows down the enzymes while it actually removes the air as well too allowing you to put more apples and more peaches or more whatever into a jar versus raw packing so Blanching, definitely blanching for a hot pack. Yeah. Okay, good. I'm usually very lazy about uh, canning, and I don't often, uh, I almost always raw pack. Uh, the, the exception usually generally being um, I don't, when I make ap apple pie filling, because you do always blanch that so that you can fit more in a jar. And apples are really, have a lot right. of air, and so they naturally do float quite a bit. Yes, yeah, yeah. Perfect. Okay, and so let's talk about, um, besides just popping open a jar and eating them as a snack, which I'm sure you could easily. Yes, <laughs> we love. Absolutely. Because, <laughs> you know, that's, uh, I can a lot, we have a local Flathead Cherry, so we have sweet, uh, amazing sweet cherries locally, and I definitely can them, and those are probably our favorite winter snack. But beyond yes. snacking, yes. what can we do with our sliced apples? 
you, I mean, at this point, it's like, what can you not do with them? So our, my, my most favorite, favorite, favorite recipe of all time, and the family's as well, too, is pull apart apple bread, right? So you have, you make this delicious bread, that's packed full of brown sugar in it, all the good stuff that you probably should not be eating, but it's really good. Yeah. <laughs> it's really good. And so you take your apple slices. So instead, you're just creating your bed as is, emptying out your, you know, eliminating the liquid from your jar of apples. And then you're just slicing them up and just adding them to the bread. And it's perfect. It's perfect. It's a process, but it is one of the most rewarding dessert treats that you're ever going to actually have. But breakfast treat as well, too, if you're doing brunch or anything like that. Um, it's one of my favorites. Uh, and, you know, pop tarts. We do pop tarts quite often because my children feel like I deprive them from buying pop tarts at the mar market. So we'll make pop tarts out of them, and we'll just do like a powdered sugar glaze over the top of them, or whatever the case is. And you know, pop tarts are great, and they're easy to make as well too. So it's one of those really less exhausting items for them. Um, other things uh, we've made with them, of course, for brunch. We do brunch every Sunday with the family. So cinnamon, brown sugar, cinnamon butter, a lot of just butter in them for, you know, toppings for waffles or pancakes or anything like that. Ideal as well, too. My new one that I've actually come up with is I'm on this popsicle kick because my children always, of course, want the sugary popsicles or the kind that just cost an arm and a leg and are not even healthy for you. We do popsicles. So it's basically an apple pie popsicle. So you just, I know, I know it's, it's the recipe is getting ready to be shared. They devoured the first pack. So I didn't even get to get photos of it. So, so we've got to do a round two. Um, but it, it's just basically apple pie. It's delicious. It's in a popsicle form and it's really healthy for you guys. And that is my newest, my newest funness with that. I mean, yeah, I think I've had too much fun with popsicles this year. So yeah. Yeah. Okay, just really quickly, let's go back to the pop tarts. Um, so you're just like rolling out pie dough and putting like, the drained slices right in the dough and folding it up. Absolutely. You want to really, really strain your apples well. And I think I forgot to mention that. Whenever you're using canned apples, there's always going to be a lot of the simple syrup in the apples. I just put them in a colander as I'm preparing everything else that I'm making. And I just let all that liquid drip out of them. And at times, too, I will take them and I will just actually press them a little bit to make sure that the liquid's out. I mean, the, the sweetness that you've got from your simple syrup and the apple itself remains in the apple. You just don't want a lot of that liquid that's in there. So because I know that that's going to occur, sometimes with the Pop-Tarts, I'll just go ahead and bake a sheet, the bottom sheet, just ever so slightly to make it a little bit firm. And then I'll add the apples on there. I'll just slice them up. Not really in tiny pieces because by the time the apples cook during the canning process they are soft so sometimes i'll just cut them slice them slice them slice them and just just spread them on there depending on how thick i really want them to be and i try to keep them because i like to use one quart to two quarts at a time just to have a little bit of extra throughout the day because they don't it's not that they don't last they don't last because your family won't allow them to last so it's one of those things that i, I try to plan to make two per person Mm -hmm. kind of thing like that and um just allowing that liquid keeps your crust from getting soggy i guess i should say is what i want to say yeah that makes sense, that makes sense. perfect and pie dough is so easy and the, the great thing about little like pop tarts because i love pie but i don't feel like i'm a good pie maker my husband says i am but i think my problem is i compare myself to my grandma and she made great pies and i don't compare to her at least in my memory that I don't, but pie just really isn't that difficult. And pop tarts can, they don't have to be fancy, right? They don't have to be fancy. So. Absolutely. Yeah, I think so too. And I think that the thing is once you get a good pie crust recipe down and you know, it, it, you know, it's all about the consistency too, right? So you're making something, you've got to feel it. Like when you, you know, we were talking about bread early, it's, it's how you feel as you're making it, how the dough feels, how everything feels. You know, there are times where I'll be like, oh, I don't know if I added enough water, you know, Pie crust is one of those things you just gotta make often enough to know what it feels like to actually value it. Because I still judge my pie crust to my 12 year old pie crust. Hers is, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie when I say hers is pretty good. And I'm just like, oh, mine's a little, yeah, okay. What, what did you use? And you know, we kind of share back and forth and stuff like that. But yeah, it's one of those things. You'll master it. And then you mentioned, just quickly, you mentioned about butter and cinnamon and brown sugar yeah. and apples. And so one of my most favorite desserts, because we have a giant apple tree that produces, 
we're really lucky in that regard. One of my favorite desserts in the fall is quite literally just core it. I leave the peel on because I don't care about the peel, but if you don't like the peel, you can do it. But you could do this with the sliced apples too that you can. Is you just drain them, I'm thinking, and then saute them in a little bit of butter with a little maybe a little bit of brown sugar in there, and then eat it ice cream or whipped cream. And if you've already got them canned, it would be so quick and easy. It is. It trust me, what that's if I forget to grab a fruit because we're out of season, whatever it is. Apples it is. It's apples or peaches. Usually that comes right out. Apple or peaches. And it goes great with, you know, brunch. Whatever you're doing for brunch, it's a bread or, you know, pancakes or waffles or whatever the case is. It's really easy, great topper. Simple, simple process. Right. And I'm guessing you could probably do it with, like you said, a topping. You could easily put it on cake, on oatmeal, on pancakes, on everything. Yep. Absolutely. Ice cream. Whatever you want to do. If you're making ice cream with it, perfect. Yeah. And you can Wrap it in as you're making your ice cream too would be, now that I'm thinking about that, yeah, would be absolutely delicious too. <laughs> so do you think if you drained it well enough, if you drain them well enough, you could use them just like you would use fresh apples in most anything? If you drain them well enough, you could get really close to using a fresh apple and whatever you're going to use. But the problem is, is that, you know, when you can something, you're thoroughly cooking it all the way through. And then on top of that, you're, you're having them submerged in liquid. So, you know, with us, we don't break into our apples. No, we cannot get apples anymore into the market. So, you know, we don't have local orchards close to us. We have to cross the mountains to get to our orchards there. So when I go there, it's a one shot deal. I'll get enough for cold storage. I'll get enough to can. I'll get enough for pie filling and that's it. And if the kids really, really crave apples throughout the year, you know, we can get them in little various farm stands because we keep so much apples in cold storage for them that they buy them from, you know, because we are Washington State, yeah. that it's easy to get a hold of. But, you know, in regards to using them as fresh, you don't have to cook them as long. So let's just say, let's just say you're making something, um, like apple muffins or something. An apple muffin. Yeah. So you wouldn't have to worry about that. You're adding it to that. That's why I say always use the firmest apples you can have because now you're double cooking it, right? You went from the canning process, you're going to the cooking process. But if you use a nice firm apple, you're not going to get an apple sauce or an apple mush into your product, but you're still going to get apple bites. And especially if you're just blanching them quick to just release that air, slow the enzyme process down, and then you have it, your apples are still pretty much firm. You know, when I do apple pie, ap my apple pie filling, I use three varieties of apples. I'll use a tart apple, like, you know, the, the greens, or, and then I like to use a firm apple, which for us really is Honeycrisp or Fuji. And then I like a softer apple. So sometimes I'll use a gala in there. So you're getting different textures, different tastes of apples. And so when I can them, sometimes the jars will look, how do you say, um, they look beautiful, but then you can see that there's a soft apple in there. And to me, that's completely okay because I know that that apple is going to be that melting bit inside your pie filling, you know, and things like that. But if you were going to use those canned apples to make apple pie, for example, well, apple pie takes a bit of time to bake, you know what I mean? And it's just, we're talking pie crust, right? You're protecting it with pie crust and whatnot. So you can use your apples to make apple pie filling if you needed to as well but make sure again I, I can't emphasize it enough because I don't want anyone to be disappointed if they're like canning soft apples and then you've got a mush in your jar you know what I mean use the firmest apples you can find that's the best best tip I can give you on that and use the mushy the softer apples for applesauce Absolutely. Apple butter, apple sauce, whatever you want to make with it. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Like we don't, we, we have a steam canner. So when we get, when we make juice concentrate out of our steam canner, we have all that leftover apple, what we call apple mush that's in the top calendar, calendar part. And I use that to make my apple sauce. Oh, very so, yeah. So instead of just wasting it or discarding it or whatever, I will take it right out of the, I, I actually will take the seed and the core out of it. But then I have the skin and the apple that goes into the steam canner from there. And then once it's done, I take it out, I scoop out, or you can run it through a food mill. And then you're just, you know, straining it out. And I just go ahead and I add whatever I want to make applesauce with. Sometimes it's just cinnamon, honestly, with a tiny bit of sugar. Or sometimes it's something else. It just varies. And then I can it for applesauce. So my apples go to apple butter if I'm going to make anything, an apple pie. So that, so that would be the best thing. <laughs> okay, so uh, just so everyone knows, this, you can can apples in a lot of ways. So it's worth buying a bunch. Oh, apples. yeah. 
And the great thing about apples are that they will keep for a long time. So if you buy a bunch, it's not like peaches where like if you buy a whole bunch, you really kind of have to tackle it in a day or two because they'll start to get soft and then they're not so good. Absolutely. Yeah. And I, I don't have a root cellar. I don't know if you have a root cellar, but we don't have a root cellar. So, and our home, we only use wood stove to heat our house because, you know, we had oil and oil is just too expensive. So we've got a great wood stove. It heats the house. But what I do is I close off my office here and I have shelves in my closet where I store a lot of our items that don't fit into the garage anymore. And I'll just put them in here. Apples are one of them because I can watch them closely and they will keep. I mean, my goodness, they will keep for quite a few months if you are able to get bushels of apples or boxes of apples, however you guys buy them, or even go to the orchard and harvest them there. They keep for so long. It's incredible. Just, you know, just keep checking them. That's it. You know, just keep checking them. Yeah. I do the same thing. We have a guest bedroom. No one visits us in the winter because I live in Northwest Montana. People don't come here. <laughs> Um, <laughs> people are like, no, it's cold and snowy. That's not where we want to go in the winter. And so I just close, I do the same thing. I have a wee heat with a wood stove and I just close that room off and all my winter squash goes in there and all the apples and those kinds yeah. of things. Yeah. All of our root vegetables go outside because of the dirt that's on them. So they stay out in the garage side, but the apples, you know, like you said, your winter squash and things like that, they're in here. They're in here because, you know, you, you make do with what you have, right? And, and that's exactly what we've learned to do is just make do with what we have on that. Yeah. Apples can be a little, they like a lot of moisture, which I don't have. Um, I, I'm very dry. I live in a very dry climate. <laughs> Even in yeah, Washington. Washington. <laughs> very dry. And so apples like a lot of moisture. And so that can sometimes affect. So, you know, everything, you know, even if you have a root cellar, you might not have the right root cellar for apples. Right. And, they have the right root cellar for apples, but not for potatoes or whatever. So yeah, just, and that's what you got. The humidity plays a huge factor, you know, and we live on the coastal side of Washington state where we get nine months of rain and it's always moist in my house. Yeah. I mean, we have to sometimes in the spring and early summer, light the stove, open up all the windows just to dry out because we've had two weeks worth of rain and you can walk and you can feel the moisture in your, you know, your rugs or whatever it is. So yeah, we don't have that no, but what we're saying to everybody is to make do with what you have. And so if you don't have a root cellar, you can still buy lots of apples. You can still probably keep them good for a long time in an unheated room. And you can can them. And canning them sliced gives you a ton of options. Yeah. A ton of options. Definitely. Definitely. Bedding that you could serve that with pork somehow, too. Like a oh, my God. Yes. Take your apples. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Take your apples. I didn't do that one. Did you want to say something? No, go for it. I'm okay. excited. So you take your apples and then you're just going to do a little bit of ginger, right? So you're going to just kind of like finely grate some ginger in with it. And then I, this is where I would do the honey. So I, I go ahead and I do, what I do is I'll cook the ginger and the apples ever so slightly with a little bit of butter on them, just, you know, just to brown them up a little bit. And then I take them out and then I'll drizzle honey on it. And then from there, I put it right onto like your pork sliced pork tenderloin or something like that, because, you know, applesauce and pork go together. Right. But this, because I love ginger is one of the, I'm going to tell you. Yes. Yes. Very, very nice. Very nice. Yeah, so I, I have a recipe on the blog that's um, an apple salsa verde. So it's apples with tomatillos and hot peppers. And I really love it. But um, I didn't grow tomatillos this year. I, tomatillos can be finicky for me to grow. And so I didn't grow them this year. And so obviously I'm not going to make them. I, they're hard to find locally. But I'm thinking that if you did the sliced apples, um, and it's really good with pork. So you can have a little vinegar, some apples, and your pork roast. A little bit of red wine vinegar or something. Yes, definitely. Yeah, that would be really good. <laughs> yes. I'm going to tell you, I've got a pork tenderloin sitting there now, and I'm down to my last few cans. We don't start apples until, I think the, the second week of September here is when they start bringing them over from the other side, of the other side of the mountains. Like, if, if you know anything about Washington State, it's divided up by a mountain pass. And anytime you want to go to the, the what we call the desert side, the drier side, you know, you got to cross the mountains. And it, it, it's such an odd drive as you're driving through there. Um, the closest place that I can actually buy apples on that side is about an hour and 15 minutes from me. So it, it's worth the drive. It really is because the cost is almost 75 cents less a pound by crossing over than buying them here in the Seattle metro area. It's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, I would do that too. And so um, for me, I don't really start them until the end of September, just because the, my particular um, apples on my tree are just better after a frost. So yeah. it can depend on the time of year. You know, sometimes you get a frost early, but you know, a frost makes them sweeter. I'm wondering if these guys, be, I'm wondering if a lot of the places that sell, and I know for a fact that some of the places here that sell the apples are selling them, they were basically last year's crop at a cold storage, hence the price difference on that. But if you go to an orchard, I mean, your price is still, but nobody wants to cross the mountain pass in the middle, you know, after that first frost anyways. So for us, it's like, you know, I would love to have this beautiful apple tree and actually our neighbor down the mountainside from us has some very old old apple trees down there and um, varieties that aren't commonly grown anymore it, it just he just mr I mean, mr perkins is just an older gentleman whose family has actually used to own this whole area and then they sold off parcels at a time and so he kept his one section of their apple orchard and it's made it he's made it his pet project so every once in a while he'll he'll message me and he'll say, I've got apples down here. And I, you know, I go running down there. I'm like, well, what do you have now? <laughs> you know? And it's one of those blessings that he's just been, you know, he's free to gift them. So that's the nice part about that. So. Yeah, absolutely. And I would say, you know, uh, for everyone who's looking for apples, if you live in a climate that apples can grow, always look locally. There's a lot of people who have trees in their backyard who don't do anything with them. They just right. don't. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that really. But, you know, ask, you can't, it never hurts to ask. There's a, a plum tree down the road for me, uh, it's not looking so healthy this year, but in years past, I've just gone up to the people who, who live there and I'm like, can I, can I steal some plums? And, you know, and I give them some jars of jam back in trade. So there's always like people who are willing to get rid of stuff, especially if they're not using it. So definitely. I mean, gleaning is probably, I remember my first gleaning experience. I, this was about seven, eight years ago. I was sweating walking up to the house to knock on their door to ask them, you know, can, can I harvest that apple tree? And she's like, well, normally somebody else comes. And I'm like crushed. And she goes, but they didn't come this year. So go ahead, take what you want. And I think it was a smaller tree. Like I, I, as far as I can climb, she's like, climb it. I don't care. As far as I can climb, I was harvesting all these apples out of this tree. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. And uh, my husband ha has taught me this lesson and he was always just like, the worst people can do is say no. Right. Right. You can't, they can't take away your birthday is what we always say. They can't take away your birthday. The worst they can do is say no. So it doesn't, I'm always very shy, I think, about asking, but my husband's always like, just ask. What's the yeah. worst thing that can They say no. Okay. And that's what it is. I think so. I think you're right, is that once we get past that, I mean, after that one experience, I wasn't afraid anymore. I was like, okay, I don't know you, but... I'll bring you back something and then usually they'll look at me and like oh yeah sure you'll bring me back something and I do and then they're like oh my gosh thank you you know whether they ate it or not I don't know but the point of it is they were surprised that I actually came back to thank them for allowing me to glean off their trees right. so it works I think that's a really important part um, about community we're kind of covering everything here with health and nurse is that it's important to build community and one of the things is that you don't just take you also give and so yeah. that's how you give Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. And so is there anything else we're missing? Any other ways we, to use canned apples? We'll get back on track. You know, yeah, we kind of lost track of that. I'm really easy to get. <laughs> um, you know, just the one thing about using canned apples is, is that you will regret. And I, and I say this every single year. There's very few things that I go, can as much as you can, you will regret. I used to say that about green beans and carrots. And then when my family started slowing down eating canned green beans and carrots, now it's, apples you know you can as much as you can get a hold of you will not regret it and then again just you know just make sure that the the, the sugar is to your comfort level do not make it too sweet because you are sweetening it as you go anyways because basically when you're cooking with it you're adding sweetener to it and you're, you don't want to just uh how do you say it? like pucker up or not pucker up just like suck in because you've got all this sweetness in your mouth and um you know just just modify your sweetness as you're canning them it's really fine even if you didn't want to add a simple syrup don't add a simple syrup the other thing about canning apples too is just remember your um to, to prevent the browning because they will brown if you do not use lemon juice or citric acid or anything like that so that's another thing when you cook with it I mean, honestly, if there is anything that you would cook to use apples with, 
these canned apples are better. And, it, and the reason why is because it prevents you from having to go to the market and just grab, you know, apples that are at that point in January for a lot of people, three something a pound, you know, and sometimes you need two pounds or, you know, of apples to do something. So using these plain canned apples, you know, mainly, you know, it is used for like a dessert treat type of item, but you know, you were talking about the pork and adding it to the pork slices or whatever the case is, just use it, but remember, be very slow in how much sweetener you're adding to it, even as you're preparing it for cooking, because it already contains, if you're using a sweetener in the simple syrup, you know, to do something like that. So, yeah. And I'm thinking if you wanted to make like a sweet smoothie or a milkshake, that those... Oh my gosh, yes. I've never done that. I, I don't. My children have blown up the blender, so we... <laughs> Let's just say we had a ceiling experience without a lid on it and things like that. So we don't, but you are right. I think a milkshake would be absolutely fabulous with it. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. You can go wrong. And I think even, you know, I, I don't uh, do a lot of milk because I'm getting older in milk and I don't agree with each other anymore. It's <laughs> I don't know what that's about, but so, uh, but you know, you could do a frozen banana and some of those apple slices. That would be good. Oh my gosh, that would. Yeah. So that would be really smart. Muffins are just a basic, simple muffin would be a great way to do it too. If you're doing a quick breakfast muff, muff, um, muffin, Justin had asked at one point, and I've never made it, but you can probably add it to granola as well too. So if you're making like a granola bar or a, you know, a protein bar of some sort, and you want to just throw those apples into the dehydrator, they will still dehydrate. They'll have a pliable leather texture, but you can, you know, if you're only making like a, a couple of bars at a time for whatever the case is, one jar of apples will go quite a bit, you know, just you know, extract as much of the liquid as you can and then throw them in a dehydrator for protein bars or, you know, or whatever, mix with it if you really wanted to. So yeah, those are options too. Right. Definitely. And I'm thinking they would probably be good just, you know, drained and thrown on top of granola with some milk. You know what I mean? So, you know, just like as a... Extra that's fruit. Justin, see? Justin is a big granola guy too. He loves his granola and that's how he'll do. He'll grab whatever canned fruit there is just to add to the top of it. Yeah, we're, we're that way a lot with oatmeal too. We eat a lot of oatmeal in the winter, especially it's easy and it's warm. Yeah, it's good. I mean, there's no denying it. Uh, the first year you'll can just not enough, and then by next year you'll learn, and then you'll have quite a bit put up. Especially when you start experimenting with the convenience. You know what canning is about? Convenience food, right? We do it because it's a convenience. We don't do it because of any other reason. We like to be able to grab vegetables or fruit or you know soups or meat and. Apples are no exception to that in any way, shape, or form. You know, it's convenient. It really is. And I mean, Kathy's busy. I'm busy. You know, wintertime, we slow down a bit, but it's still busy. You know, we, we yeah. still have so much to do, especially if you guys have kids at home or, you know, whatever the case is, it, convenience. Right. Really. Yeah. Um, the, the book Animal Vegetable Miracle, have you read that by Barbara King? No, no. It's really good, but um, it's been years since I've read it, but there's a quote in that book that has always stuck with me, and she says something to this effect. It's not exact. No one yell at me because I didn't get it quite. <laughs> but she talks about the fact that, like, she thinks of her canning as um, convenience paid in advance. Yes. And that's exactly how you should think about canning. Yes. Uh, that, that's good. That is good. Yes. It's not, that's not the exact quote. I'll try and find the exact quote. Yeah, no, that's really... That is so true. It is so true. Yeah, you're right. So it's work now. Definitely it's work while you're doing it, but you will be so glad later that you have it done. Right. And, uh, and we talk, and we've talked about this before on Homespun Seasonal Living, um, is that sometimes things are time consuming, but that doesn't mean that they're difficult. Like there's, there's two different types of tasks. There are difficult tasks. Absolutely. Canning apples is not a difficult task. It is yeah. a time-consuming task, especially if you're going to do a lot. I don't, we're not going to lie about that. It takes time. But it's like, you know, so we were talking about, um, you know, when you're making pie dough, the more you do it, the better you get. And it's the same thing with canning. The more you learn you, it. Yeah. Right. You get more efficient at it. The first time you can something, right? Like, you, every bowl and pot in the house is a mess. Now, I can can a, a box of peaches really very quickly. And dishes at the same time and move on yeah it's it takes time i mean here's here i'll give you a quick tip on 
peeling apples, because we know apples can be really tedious when it comes to peeling them, is, is that um, my husband's a carpenter, so bear with me. My husband's a carpenter. We bought a brand new drill bit, cleaned it up, you know, got it all cleaned up. It's a whole boring drill bit. We put it on the drill, put it in directly the, the stem end of the apple, push it all the way through. You can activate the drill and the potato peeler at the same time. You're peeling apples, and I'm not going to lie, we timed it. You can peel an apple in less than five seconds, and wow. you're going. You're going, you're going. So we have a bucket that has um, a five-gallon bucket that we fill with um, citric acid in it. So as we're peeling, the apples get tossed in there, and we go, and we go, and we go. And I'm telling you, I can get a full 30-pound box of apples done in less than probably 10 wow. minutes. Nice. Peeled that way. And I'm going to tell you, those are the tricks, right? So you learn things as you go on speed and efficiency and pattern. And, and it's the same thing with apples is, is that you're like, oh, well, these were great eaten from the jar, but what else can I do with them? Or it's going to come that time when you go, oh, I really want to make apple muffins or whatever. And you're like, oh, I don't have to go into the market, you know, oh, here they are. And, and you just start grabbing and you're going and you're making and, and then you challenge. I mean, that's the same thing with me was, you know, my love for popsicles this summer, you know, it was like, okay, well, what do I have in the pantry that I can actually make? And, you know, here comes the wool. I've got to be putting up more apples this year. So out came a jar of apples and I was like, okay, strain them really well, made my whole mixture and then just started shoving, didn't even do anything to apples, just took the apples as is, shoved them into the popsicle mold with the mixture and let it go. So I might this time around, maybe slightly just toss them a little bit of brown sugar and um, a little bit of brown sugar and a little bit of sugar before I shove them in there. But I don't know. They were good the way they were actually. So it didn't really matter. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Great. So this is, yeah. So we're just saying it's all about what your family will eat in convenience. I, uh, I used to teach canning classes at the local community college and I would always tell people in my classes, only can what you know you're going to eat, right? Like I had a gal, she's like, last year I canned seven, 17 quarts of rhubarb chutney because we had all this rhubarb chutney. And she's like, and no one ate it. And I was like, well, would your family normally have eaten rhubarb chutney? I mean, and she's like, well, no, we never really eat chutney on anything. Well, <laughs> then don't make it. Like exactly. don't waste time and energy. And I think that brings a good point. And I don't know if you if you were at that point, but when I first started learning how to preserve foods, especially canning, it was like, oh, I've got to try that. That tastes good. I'm not going to lie. There was a lot that, like you said, didn't get touched. So, you know, chutney, you know, rhubarb, I, I do a butter and I do, um, I do a pie filling in a sense, you know, pre-made, you know, pie yeah. filling. But it's not one of our favorites. So instead of having like a huge section of rhubarb, I have one plant, yeah. whatever I can put up with that one plant, that's it. You know, it, it, I think that you brought up a great point is as much as we want to try new things and whatnot, you can always do small batches of it and see if you like it. You may regret not doing it later that, oh, I should have did a little bit more, but guess what? That's next year. That's right. That's, that's next year. Okay. Don't waste the food. Don't waste the time, the effort, or the food. You know, if it's not something, like you said, you're going to eat on a regular basis. Just don't do it. Yeah. We're not going to eat chutney at my house. I mean, I, I've made it and we've used it. Uh, you know, I've done small batches, but we just don't eat enough of it to me. And the other thing, and, and Anne mentioned this too, is your family's taste may change over time. Oh. I used to have to do like, I, I mean, honestly, I would have to do 50 to 75 jars of salsa to get us through a year, pints of salsa. Now I don't have to, we're not, we've just kind of, we phased into a different phase of, and we're not eating as much salsa as we used to. And so, and so you may find that you need a lot more apples now, but maybe as your children grow older, yeah. you might. Well, we were, just like you were saying, it, it's the same thing with the carrots and the green beans. When they were little and you were serving their plates, you knew what you were going through. But as they got older and they're like, well, I don't like cooked carrots, but I like cooked green beans. Right. You know what I mean? So it, it's just one of those things you'll phase out and you'll do, and it, it, it applies to anything anything and everything and um but you can always tempt them with a dessert option so when you're canning apples or peaches or whatever the case is you're just like oh well you know i'm gonna make a b c d i could justify doing it because i don't know anybody that turns down well i shouldn't say that you know turns down dessert in one form or another right right, right. you know what i mean yeah, yeah I, have a sweet tooth in Montana. I never turned down dessert ever <laughs> nope. 
Me neither. <laughs> I run a lot because I like to eat dessert. I mean, I like to run too, but I, you know, yeah. I, I justify it in my head. Well, I'm going to run so I can run. <laughs> and I don't run, so I'm like, let me haul another bag of feed to the back. <laughs> Whatever works, right? Whatever we have to do. So, all right. Well, we will put links to the recipes and um, how to can apples, and uh, we have some other links for you. And if you get that popsicle up, we will make sure we put that in. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, and definitely. We'll put all of Anne's, um, her links for social media and everything else in the show notes. So thank you so much. Anne. Thank you. Thanks for having me.